Hello my fellow strangers, I hope that you're all doing well. I was sort of deciding what I wanted to do today. It's been a little bit of a busy week doing a student conferences this week with my students and um, I usually do conferences on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but we don't have classes or anything on Wednesday at the university that I'm at. So what that means is that I'm trying to pack all of my students into today and tomorrow. And so um, I had several today. I have quite a few coming in tomorrow, but I still have like several students who just didn't sign up because you know, undergrads, man. It is what it is. <laughs> I was one once. I'm just getting back tenfold now the like bad behavior <laughs> that I had as an undergrad. I'm a good student. I skip class all the time and stuff. I was not the ideal student. Uh, I thought I'd talk about my dissertation sort of progress because it's been a little while since I've checked in with you guys to tell you sort of how that's going. Um, at least not in any real detail. Um, and so I thought we'd talk about that. So where I'm at right now is I have done my prospectus. I've completed writing it. Um, I did two drafts and my second draft was approved to be released to my full committee. Um, so I had been working with my the director of my dissertation and then he approved it to go to the other two members that are reading my dissertation. Um, and then I have to defend my prospectus. So today what happened is we scheduled a date for my prospectus defense, which is going to be on Thursday, December 6th. So two weeks after Thanksgiving. And at the dissertation defense, basically, I get um, a lot of feedback basically from um, my committee regarding whether or not the questions I'm asking are good and whether it's basically a viable project. And so I don't anticipate anything is going to go wrong with that. I don't think that my dissertation director would have allowed me to send out a prospectus proposal to the full committee if he didn't feel like it was relatively solid. So um, I don't anticipate that there'll be any issues at that meeting. Um, I don't foresee any reason that I wouldn't pass the defense. I'm a good student. Yeah, that should go over well. But I thought that since it's not set in stone entirely yet, but it's really close to being set in stone, that I would tell you guys a little bit more detail about what I plan to write about in my dissertation. So right now it's slated to have six chapters. Two of those are the interim conclusion, but then the four body chapters are kind of like the meat and the, you know, the big pieces of the dissertation, like probably the most important pieces. So what I'm going to be writing about are literary adaptations in the transmedia space where YouTube serves as the narrative center. So basically, if you're not aware of what these words mean, um, transmedia just means taking place across multiple media platforms. So um, for example, the Lizzie Bennet Dyers, if you're familiar, um, most of the people here on Starting Up as Strangers are nerd fighters, so maybe aware of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries through the fact that it was in part um, uh, created by Hank Green. Um, he sort of did this alongside a producer named Bernie Sue. And it was essentially a modernized transmedia adaptation of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. So they used YouTube and then the transmedia part, like the cross media platforms, um, they used Twitter, they had a LinkedIn page for some of the characters, um, the, you know, they used, I think, Lookbook, which was like an older, I don't think it's even used, I don't think it's used anymore, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think they used Google Plus for a smidge in the Lizzie Bennet Dyers of Memory Serbs. Um, uh, but either way, you know, so it, they use a bunch of platforms. There was also more than one YouTube channel involved. So it's sort of this um, way in which stories or narratives are relayed um, through more than just like one Base. There's there's like maybe a narrative center, but then there are sort of like pieces of the story in all of these different spaces. Um, now, transmedia 
storytelling is not necessarily anything new, but the adaptation part of it, um, Lizzie Bennet Diaries was a pioneer in this field. And so there has been some academic work done on the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, but what I'm looking at is sort of the proliferation of adaptations in this transmedia style. I'll primarily be looking at a production house out of New Zealand called the Candle Wasters, and they do Shakespeare adaptations. So a bulk of the work that's been done in the transmedia space in terms of the academic stuff has largely been about the Lizzie Bennet Diaries and Pemberley Digital, uh, which is Hank Green and Bernie Sue's production house. Um, you know, they did the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, they did Frankenstein MD, the Marsh Family Letters, although a couple of those have some complicated authorial history, <laughs> which maybe I'll go into someday on here. Um, they also did um, Welcome to Sandition and also Emma Approved, which has, start, has started a second season, by the way, if anyone's interested. Like I say, I'm probably going to look at Emily Digital a little bit because they are like sort of pioneers in the field, but largely I'm looking at production houses outside of them because people haven't really looked at anyone but Pimperly Digital at this point. I'm sort of looking to understand a the form um, so like what are the different places on the internet that are being used how are they being used narratively and then um, also how these different pieces sort of are meant to work together so I'm kind of looking at how the candle wasters either um, did or in some cases perhaps did not sort of follow the the guidebook so to speak that was sort of laid out by the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. I hope that makes sense. So that's sort of my first chapter is looking at sort of the form. Um, the second chapter I'm hoping to do is all about how um, this kind of adaptation actually encourages parasocial bonding. And so parasocial bonding is sort of like this perceived relationship that's actually one way. <laughs> um, and there's have been studies done about parasocial bonding with literature and television and social media and a whole all kinds of things but I'm specifically interested in how the how that works in these like immersive storytelling spaces like the literary adaptations that are sort of told through trans transmedia um, methods. The third chapter that I'm hoping to do is going to be a little bit different than the other ones but it's looking at specifically the candle wasters who have done mainly Shakespeare adaptations and talking a little bit about how Shakespeare's work is particularly suited for transmedia formats. Um, so that should be an interesting chapter. <laughs> Probably one of my more fun chapters. So my final chapter is essentially going to be looking at um, these literary transmedia adaptations as young adult media products because they're both created primarily for and in a lot of cases by young people. So it's important to sort of understand how they are um, both contributing to and perhaps even being affected by youth and youth culture. So that should be a fun chapter too. So this dissertation is really encapsulating a lot of my academic interests. I'm really interested in things like pop culture, um, adaptation. I've been a film, literature, television person for a long time, so and I like uh, media studies as well. I've also been very interested in things like children's and young adult literature, so that kind of brings in that interest. So now these chapters aren't necessarily set in stone yet. Um, nothing's technically set in stone at all ever, but it'll be kind of set in stone after um, the prospectus defense, which again is happening um, in early December. And so um, after the defense, then I start writing. I'm sure some of these chapters may shift or evolve, but generally speaking, I think that the um, uh, what I've revealed to you as the four chapters will stay relatively the same as I've described them, um, at least in a general sense. So. Um, unless my committee has some like incredibly um, jolting feedback of some sort at my defense, which could reshape potentially certain chapters. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'm really excited to sort of see what comes of this. And um, I'm excited to just start writing because I really want to get my degree done at some point. Um, so that way I can get on the job market and, you know, be done with school because I've been in school for a really long time. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all, again, have a great 
Thanksgiving and um, I hope that you are able to spend the day with your loved ones, family, friends, and for those of you who aren't celebrating, I hope you have just a lovely week um, and I'll see you all next Monday, of course. So.